Really, I had to ask myself one question. Who is greater, Iche or Weed? Me or Mary Jane? Bitch, it had to be me. This video is for anyone who is calculating whether they want to quit smoking weed or do it in moderation. This is for those of us who want to be free but feel attached or indebted to Mary Jane because it has gotten us through so much. I'm here for you. Hi, my name is Janice Iche and welcome or welcome back to my channel. As usual, I'm so happy to be here with you. Let's dive right into this video. So on September 18th of this year, I started my quitting journey. I rolled and smoked my last J and you can watch my first week of sobriety in this video. It was easy, tough, weird and on the second week I filmed myself talking about why I had decided to quit smoking weed and you can watch that video here in case you haven't. Week two was quite difficult. I was feeling so miserable and to be honest, as I was editing that video, I decided that I was gonna smoke again. Watching that video, I felt like I couldn't relate to that person. My loneliness was right in my face. I was crying so much and I felt like such a miserable mess that it actually felt like that misery would end me faster than smoking weed ever could. I gave up on editing the video as well as my sobriety and decided that come the next day I would go out to buy a five gram baggie and I did. Day 13 came and I drove to Nyali to meet my plug. So actually I had told my plug when I quit and he was so proud of me so when I hit him up again two weeks later he was quite disappointed and he actually let me know. Here is a clip I actually recorded as I was waiting for him. Literally so excited because I'm picking my bestie up I'm picking my bestie up oh my god it's been two weeks I haven't seen my bestie I'm so excited to see my bestie again <laughs> I'm so excited to have fun times with my bestie yo I'm so excited okay it was a good two weeks but now it's bestie time <laughs> As you can see in that clip, I was so happy to be seeing my friend again. In that moment, I really believed that it didn't make sense for me to be sober, just to be driving myself further into loneliness. I felt like I needed my friend so much. Why would I leave Mary Jane? I had no doubts about it. So when I got home, I smoked and yo, when I tell you that I got high, those two weeks had lowered my tolerance major and that joint just captured me my whole body my whole being i felt out of control my mind was moving so fast and i became so anxious for the first time i felt like weed was a drug and i didn't enjoy it i was editing che radio show 19's live set and i even ended up accidentally deleting some footage i felt so upset just knowing that smoking weed would never be the same for me again i actually texted my plug and told him that i regretted buying and smoking the weed and he was in support of me from that first joint i knew that i had to quit this thing for good but i still had the five grams with me so i decided i was gonna smoke it in moderation until it finished. Y'all can guess what happened next. Even though it made me feel so terrible to smoke, anxious and an, a cloudy, crowded mind, I could not stop. I was back at square one, waking up in the morning and the first thing I'm thinking about is weed. I really hated this. This was the weekend before my trip to Nairobi on Monday. I bought the bag on Saturday and I had a to-do list to do before I left for my trip. I got none of those things done. Y'all, I felt like an addict. I ended up smoking the weekend away and when Monday came, as I was leaving my house, I took the remainder of the bag and sold it to someone else. I went to Nairobi knowing that I wouldn't hit up any of my plugs there, but this is where I went wrong. I got rid of the bag because I didn't want that daily smoking, but I knew in the back of my mind that I would say yes if I ever found myself around it again. And that's what happened, of course. In Nairobi, my producer friend came over with some and I smoked a little bit. And also after my performance on Friday night, 
I smoked a little bit too. I regret it both times, but I had to do it one last time just to be sure. When I got back to Mombasa, I had that loneliness of coming back home to a lonely house. So when I passed by my parents' house to pick up my car, I asked my sibling for a little nug. I just wanted to smoke a little bit that night and wake up anew the next morning. I got home, rolled the joint, and smoked a little bit of it. At this point, I didn't really need much to get me high. Like I barely finished it, like barely smoked it. I remember I became so stressed out and anxious about waking up the next morning and having that joint in my house because I just knew that I would smoke it the next day. I actually crunched the joint up and threw it away, but baby, the next morning I was in the bin trying to retrieve that joint. There was that voice in my head, like you can't throw Mary Jane away. You can't throw weed away. I was feeling like such an addict, y'all, again. I decided then that I would finish the joint because there was so much of it left. And finally, I would be done with smoking weed for good. So this was on Monday, 9th October. I began my official sober journey again on Tuesday, 10th October. I felt better that morning waking up and knowing that I was done with it for good. I will not be an addict again. I made the tough decision to say no if I ever find myself around weed again. This was the toughest part. It was much easier quitting, knowing in the back of my mind that I was still open to using weed if I ever found myself around it. But that's not really quitting, is it? I was still a stoner. So now I'm recording this on day five again. It's 14th October today and I'm looking forward to hitting one month, three months, six months, one year without weed. I know this is going to be difficult because there's still no substitute for weed and all the things it was doing for me in my life, you know, but I really feel like I owe this to myself. I do not want to be an addict. So here are a few of the things I was saying to myself to convince myself to break my sobriety. Quitting does not make sense for me now since I'm still isolated. I need my friend. I'm getting depressed. Constant reminders of all my pain right in my face and no escape. And I'm finding it so hard to get myself out of this negative headspace. I need my friend. There's no point of torturing myself like this when the circumstance of loneliness that got me into smoking weed is still very much present in my life. I am not yet above the pain of my isolation. I'm not sure how I am ever supposed to be and if I ever will be. I'm not sure how I'm ever supposed to contend with my loneliness. I need my friend. Quitting weed feels like digging a deeper hole of isolation for myself. Nah. Getting back to smoking, I'm going to do so with boundaries this time, not abusing it or smoking every day. I'll practice self-control and not just smoke for the sake of it. Sorry to my health, but my depression and sadness would finish me faster. I'll take breaks. If this thing helps me get by, I'm going to honor it as such. I'm just a human being. Y'all, I was finding every reason to validate me breaking my sobriety. And you know what? Maybe those some of those reasons were valid. But when I did break my sobriety and smoked that first joint on Saturday, 30th September, I knew it would never be the same for me again. I had to be honest with myself and admit that I had no self-control around weed. And it was smoking all through the day every day that led me to want to quit smoking in the first place. I had to start treating this as an addiction because that's what it is to me. So it has felt a little harder quitting the second time around because I was so scared and concerned about that loneliness and misery creeping back in. It was so annoying and unbearable. I'm really, really mourning the loss of a friend here. Even though it shocked my body with anxiety when I smoked again after those two weeks, I still found myself smoking again for the sake of that comfort and familiarity. But actually on day five now, I feel strong enough not to let the loneliness get to me. I feel like I can handle it just as I did when I was stoning. This second time around, I have more purpose and drive. I'm using those lessons I learned from stoning and applying them now in my sobriety. When I smoked again and regretted it, 
I really felt like I had been taking advantage of that clarity of mind and all the energy that being sober was giving me. I had felt like I was missing out on being high, but when I did smoke again, I couldn't stop wishing I was sober again. I'm excited to quit again. <laughs> Truly, I'm certain now that it's a better life on the sober side, and that is what I'm doing this for. I really hated feeling like a prisoner slave to weed, that it can't be in my house without me wanting to smoke it. I'm really excited to be leaving that behind. It's just sad to see how much weed has a chokehold on me and my life. And I just know that I'm doing the best thing for myself. And this is what this whole experience of quitting and smoking again and quitting again, this is what it's shown me. That it's not as shallow as I thought it was. It's much deeper. And really, I have to uproot it from the roots, you know? It's really up to me to take away the best lessons for myself and apply them. So from the information I've gathered from hearing other people talking about their experience of quitting weed, everyone has different withdrawals depending on what you were using weed to escape from. So like for me, the loneliness that I was using weed to escape from was all up in my face. And this was my withdrawal symptom. I don't know, some people say that they get shakes and headaches. I think this might have to do with the strain or kind of weed that you were smoking. I know the weed I was smoking was grown on African soil, so maybe not so chemicalized as or processed because I haven't had those kinds of withdrawal symptoms. So think of your situation and make your own predictions of the kind of withdrawal symptoms you will have based on what you were using weed to escape from and also based on the kind of weed that you were smoking. Really, I had to ask myself one question. Who is greater, Iche or weed? Me or Mary Jane? Bitch, it had to be me. I am bigger than weed, big enough to never need it again or even want it. Weed empowered me when I needed that empowerment. And this is the role that weed played in my healing and in my life. Now I need to do my part and take that empowerment and run with it. Make it bigger and grander because with weed, we stagnated at some point. This is the point where you need to move yourself forward into the next level of your life. I'm not hating on weed. I will never. But I just know that it's time for me to claim and step into my power. So here's a little note that I wrote to Weed. Dear Mary Jane, I will always love you. You got me to this point in my life and I am forever indebted to you. I will always give you this credit, but I can no longer have you in my life. And this is my decision. You played your part and that season is over and it is okay for this to be true. I am not abandoning you. I am taking the power that you gave me and making it bigger. And this is my part to play. This is my role in my life. I will always miss you, but I know you're good wherever you are, away from me. <laughs> really, you guys, it's like breaking up with that long time friend that you had just because you know the relationship isn't serving you anymore and it's okay no hate or negative feelings towards this old time friend they were there for you throughout everything they got you to where you are today but now it's up to you to get yourself farther because guess what we're stagnated and that's the truth that's what i had to admit to myself that i was stagnant by smoking weed every day and not being able to beat that addiction on my own and not having the self-control to regulate it. And actually, I noticed that with year by year, I was getting worse with my smoking. I thought I would be getting better, but I was getting worse. It's really about admitting the truth to yourself about the relationship that you have to marijuana and acting accordingly. To that making the best choices out of the truth that you have admitted to yourself so thank you so much for watching if you've watched all the way to the end comment and share with us what your quitting journey has been like and you can also like and subscribe to support me and my channel i am so proud of you for quitting if you are on this journey too 
it's not an easy one. We still love and appreciate weed for all that it has done in our lives. But at the same time, we can accept that it is time to move on and leave weed behind in order to walk into a grander version of ourselves and our lives. Do this at your own pace and your own time and be very gentle but very firm with yourself and your journey. You got this and you have my support. Much love from me always. Bye and catch you in my next video.